Clare are the All-Ireland Senior Champions of 1997. 1997 has been a unique year in hurling. The year when the losing finalists of Munster and Leinster were allowed back into the new All-Ireland format. Wexford were the defending All-Ireland champions. Clare, the 1995 title holders, were attempting to regain the Lean McCarthy Cup. We look back on the year with members of that all-conquering Clare squad. Winning in 95, of course, everybody was on your side then. Then you had that year of a break. Was that a good thing, do you think? Um, hard to know, Jimmy. In some ways, uh, it would have been nice to do three in a row. <laughs> but maybe we wouldn't have had the same hunger this year if we had gone on and, and beaten Limerick last year. Who knows what would have happened after that? Anyway, you can't really say it was a monster semi-final and we would have had to beat Tipperary last year, which Limerick struggled to do at the same time. So, in some ways, it was a good thing. And, uh, in that at the start of this year we really made up our mind that we were very disappointed last year and that we were going to have a right cut off 97. Well, we thought uh, in 96, you know, it was a lapse of concentration, these things happen, but um, we set about it, you know, workman like fashion early in 96 uh, for the 97 season and, um, you know, I probably worked even harder than we did in 95 for it, so we knew it was there. I mean, you can't win it in Ireland and then um, not feel that you could come back again and win another one, you know, so we felt there was very little we had to do other than more card. Clare's 1997 campaign began with a preliminary round tie against Kerry. The result was no surprise, Clare winning by 24 points. Three goals, 24 to one goal and six. That victory put Clare into the Munster semi-final against opponents who would give them a much sterner test, Cork. And before the Cork game, Gerlach Nan talked about his expectations for the year ahead. We still had a very good cha chance of winning the championship last year. I think we played in the best game of the championship last year between Clare and Limerick. It was an absolutely superb game and a very hot day in Limerick. And we were just beaten in the last second, the last puck of the game almost by a point. So we came close last year. But having said that, there is no comparison between the appetite that we had last year and the appetite we had in 1995. And as you say, this year there's no excuse. I mean, it's either win or nothing this year. So uh, going out by a point in a semi-final, uh, this year is no good to us. Nothing good to us this year except winning. And so we have to win the game against Cork to make a start to this year's campaign. Otherwise, the year is a disaster again for us. Gerald said all year that the Cork game really was uh, the key game for us. Um, we knew if we if we get over Cork, we were going to be hurling until August. And uh, we'd fancy ourselves in, in, in that situation. So the Cork game was a game we treated very, very seriously. Clare started well against Cork. And 12 minutes in, they were leading five points to one after converting some good scores. Sports, Craigie Tui breaks down instead to Fiji O'Connell. Timmy Keller is the player who's chasing. Grant Corcoran in next to try and dispossess him. Support outside from Colin Lynch. And it's Anthony Daly who swings it in, however. And Anthony Daly has got the point. David Fitzgerald dropping it into the middle of the field. Ollie Baker going for it. Here comes Colin Lynch. Going for the score himself. And that will do his confidence. A wonderful boost indeed. James O'Connor got onto it well. Fergal Ryan misses it completely. Court defenders are very nervous. This is Clancy going for the score, making it look easy. 27 minutes played, and Clare still led by four points, but Cork. We're now playing a lot better. Look where Shawnee McGrath Cross here towards Barry Egan. Taking it away there from the attentions of Liam Doyle. Very good skill again by the fourth number 12. He wasn't too. He gets his shot in. And he has put it over the bar. That's Dermot O'Sullivan from Cloyd. Hasn't seen too much of the action so far. Colin Lynch got a stick to it but couldn't deflect it down towards Clare. Instead it's Alan Brown. Now Shawnee McGrath, somebody's got to stay really close to Shawnee McGrath. He's exerting a big influence in this match. To Joe Dean, good catch. He's got Barry Egan beside him. Go for the score himself, however. Dean hitting it, and Dean has put it over the bar. Two points the gap then, and two points the gap at half time. Clare nine, Cork seven. Five minutes into the second half, Alan Cummins scored a long range point to bring the sides level. 11 points each. But Gerald Lockton replied with two points in a row. In the clear colours right now, it's Colin Lynch towards Gerald Lockton. Nice pick up ahead of Jenna Driscoll. 
The shot is fired in and clear are back in front again. Pocking this one out into the breeze. Timmy Kelleher knocking it back only as far as James O'Connor who's now operating on the 40. Tight situation there. Putting that ball ahead there towards David Ford. Let's see what kind of a difference David Ford and Gerald Lachlan and Comfy can make in the second half. That's the shot from Gerald Lachlan and it's gone over the bar. Sean McMahon, the Clare centre-half back, then converted this free to increase Clare's lead to three points. Over the next 20 minutes, Cork worked hard to reduce the deficit, but Clare always managed to keep their nose in front. And with three minutes left, they led by two points. Will it be Clare then? They've looked the winners for some time past. But Cork giving a very battling performance this afternoon. P.G. O'Connell, inside it goes. Gerald Ackland, the Sparrow, injured. The ball is left there. Here come Clare. Great shot. And that's it, Sherry. With that Stephen McNamara goal, Clare had booked their place in the Munster final. Cork did pull one point back before the end to leave the final score. Clare, one goal, 19 points. Cork, no goals and 18. It was more or less the same team over the two years, but there was one significant new man come into your team in the centre field. Yeah, I mean, Colin has been around a while, really, Colin Lynch, and um, he was maybe struggling to make it there for a while, but really this year when he got his chance, he just exploded onto the scene. He was, he was superb in every game, which was, you know, anyone would have a, an old off game or have a game that he didn't play as well in as the previous game, but Colin, I think, was so consistent in the four games. And that really was a boost for us, you know. It really, it really gave us more options. In the other semi-final, Tipperary faced the reigning Munster champions Limerick at Semple Stadium in Thurles. There was little between the teams in the first 20 minutes. This is Cleary from what seems an impossible angle. Cleary again, super. Great ball to Mike Holham. There's a point here for the Munster champions. Here come Tipperary. Tommy's done, and that is over the bar. Mark Foley given a bit of space and time to set up the shot and set up the point. With 21 minutes played, the teams were level at five points each. Michael Thierry was back playing for Tipperary only a few months after fracturing his skull in a club game. He was having a great match, and he got the next score of the game, a goal. Aidan Butler sending it across to John Lahey. There's plenty of green grass in front of him. He has to go it alone. Stay quick. Sarris but nicked in by Michael Thierry. A great save by Joe Quaid, and so unlucky. But what opportunism by a man from Nina called Michael Cleary. And the tip people are the premier side, no doubt. At half time, there was still a goal between the teams. Michael Cleary getting the last point of the half to lead the scores. One goal and eight points to eight points. In the second half, Limerick were outclassed by a temporary team who were scoring well and defending well. John Lahey gets the clearance in comes to Declan Ryan. Now that would be a great point. It is. Comes outside to Michael Cleary. Anybody available? Cal is calling for it to the far side. Coming like a train is Lahey. But the pass is not a good one. He's facing Declan Nash. But Lahey from a typical kind of angle puts it over the bar and that secures his hat-trick of points. Declan Ryan are chasing and harassing and pursuing everything to Cleary on the wing. Here's another point. Up towards Gary Kirby, knocked down for Frankie Carroll. It hits Michael Ryan. And he wasn't expecting it. Now, here's Frankie. And again, it's Michael Ryan. That's the sort of defending we've seen from Tipperary. Comes to Declan Ryan, there's another point here. 
The white flag has been raised. Pat Heffernan, lovely to Barry Foley. He has to go for goal. It's stopped by Brendan Cummins. Great goalkeeping by young Brendan Cummins. A great display by Tipperary, who booked their place in the Munster final with 10 points to spare. The final score, Tipperary, one goal and 20, Limerick, 13 points. The one thing about 95 was that um, we didn't beat Tipperary on the way. And um, it's, it's fair to say that there is there's great rivalries between, between Clare and Tip, always has been over the years. And I suppose to, to get a crack at Tip in the Munster final was a big thing for us because we maybe felt that we weren't really a proven team until we had beaten Tip. So it was, it was a huge game for us. You have to play and beat the big guns if you want to prove yourself. <clears throat> we hadn't proven ourselves until we beat Tipperary in a major game. That was the last big psychological barrier facing player. We had overcome all the other ones. Monster final, our Island final. The big psych last big psychological barrier was, could we beat Tipperary, the, one of the strongest teams in the country, could we beat those in a Monster final? And going down to Cork that day on a lovely summer's day, I think the air of determination in the bus was greater than I have ever, ever seen before, or since even, to beat the prairie that day in Cork. And we went down very early in the morning. The morning was beautiful. The place was thronged with Clare people. And if ever you could feel an electric atmosphere, it was when we went out in the field in that day. And I think we started the game that day against Tipperary to match the atmosphere. We started at a really electric pace. Through the centre, Colin Bonner lets that one run away onto the Sparrow, holding it up for Jamesy to come onto. They've got a man over, P.G. O'Connell once again. You wonder where's Ramey Ryan? Closing in very quiet, very slowly. There was a trip over by Colin Bonner. Referee says, let's play on. And the Sparrow does and he puts it over. Daly straight to the dancing feet here of P.G. O'Connell. Good block by Ramey Ryan. Comes back to Colin Lynch. And there's always anticipation that the ball may come back to a man in support. It comes to O'Connell and he finishes it off. Neat pick up here by Declan Ryan. Oh, he angles it into the centre and there's nobody there except Colin Lynch. A real wasted opportunity at one end. Lynch at the other. He's put it over the ball. 20 minutes into the game, Sean McMahon scored this point to give Clare a 10-point to 2 lead. Tipperary looked lost then, but John Lahey helped to show the way with two excellent points. Caught well by John Lahey, beating the attempted block. He really forcefully hit that one and it drops over the bar. Good point by John Lahey. Colin Bonner was out first for it, now Tommy Dunn into space, Liam Cahill quick off the blocks, trying to get there ahead of Frank Lowen, it's John Lahey once again, tip looking to the seasoned performers like Lahey and Ryan, that's uh, another fine shot and another great point, two points for John Lahey. By half time, Clare's lead was reduced to five, 13 points to eight, and seven minutes into the second half, Tipperary had wiped it out completely with fine scores from play and good free taking by Tommy Dunn. Nice ball across towards Kevin Tucker. He's got men running ahead of him. Holds onto the ball. Goes for the score himself. Well he might. He's put it over the bar. Anthony Daly. He was getting that kind of time in the first half where he was able to take that kind of ball. Not so this time around. Declan Ryan has put it over the bar. Tommy Dunn will hit this. Four frees taken so far, 100% success, 45 metres out. He's got another one, and the teams are level for the third time. 13 to 13 the score at that stage. Clare took the lead again with a long range free from Sean McMahon. Then David Ford came from the subs bench and effectively won the monster title Fort Lair, scoring a point and then a goal in three minutes of play. Great stylish play by Jamesy. Conor Gleeson. This to the new man in. 
and that's got over the bar. Very good substitution, and it's Clare 15, Tipperary 13. James O'Connor once again. Up towards Gerald Lachlan. Taking Noel Sheehy on a tour of Torquay Cueve. The Sparrows going by over the head of Michael Ryan on towards Ford. And the referee sees the crash to the net. David Ford. This is how it happened. Yes. That's a Sparrow great score by Clare and a great run by Jorah Lachlan. Um, we've seen him do it in the first half, taking old Shea, we had a goal, but it's a tremendous shot, looking back into the back of the net. Great goal. And James O'Connor scored this point, Clare had a six-point lead with nine minutes left. Tipperary did manage to reduce the gap to three by full time, but it was Clare who were the monster champions with a final score of one goal, 18 points, to Tipperary's no goals and 18 points. Tipperary were visibly disappointed by the result, but they had the consolation of knowing that they were not out of the championship. A second chance would come for them in the quarterfinals, but Clare were the monster champions. That was the test of Clare. The biggest test we have ever faced was that uh, about 10 minutes into the second half against Tipperary. They had drawn level, they had a, a, a very strong breeze behind them, and we had to stand up and be counted, or we'd be forever known as a flash in the pan. And I think that's where our fellas really proved that character. We turned the game around, uh, we went four or five points ahead, and even though Tipperary could have leveled in the last minute, we definitely deserved to win the game. And I suppose the feeling when the game was over was the best feeling we've ever had in the three years that we've been there. Wexford were reigning All-Ireland champions, but after a poor league run in which they were relegated, many felt that they were destined for an early exit from this year's championship. In the semi-final, they met Offaly, who had overcome Leash in the previous round. Wexford and Offaly had met in the Leinster final a year previously, and just like them, this was an exciting match. Four goals were scored in the first half. Liam Dunn coming to take this 65 in his 23rd championship match. Oh, it's going to go! My goodness me! So just 10 minutes gone. And something of a fortunate goal for Wexford. Gorman watching Mitch Jordan come forward great dispossession that was a wonderful little tip away there by the left half back Colum Cassidy Rod Guiney Wexford's captain in towards Gary Lapman he was anticipating racing in ahead of Keenahan with the shot not much far behind it he's falling in and Wexford have another and it's Gary Lapman 12 minutes after the first dropped in Gary Lapman has scored for Wexford and once again some very uncertain goalkeeping from David Hughes Not a story Dropped in towards Gary Lappin Dooley seems to, simply has to get his team moving. Liam Dunn, that ball is out there towards Johnny Pilkington. Offley are renowned for their fighting qualities. They have a chance here, and they're back in business. Billy Dooley swiping that one in, and it's exactly what the Offley fans have required. Six points between the teams at half time. Wexford, three goals, six points. Offley, one goal and six. 20 minutes into the second half, Larry Murphy scored this point to put Wexford seven ahead. But typical Offley, 
They fought back. Here comes Johnny Pilkington. Great solo run by Johnny Pilkington. Chase started by Card. It's gold! A goal by Johnny Pilkington. That will surely rouse the Offaly team and their fans. Four points between the sides, but with time almost up, Offaly had reduced it to two. Martin Storey scored a great long-range point, so Offaly needed a goal to force a draw. Thanks to that wonderful save from Fitzhenry, Wexford through to the Leinster final. Billy Dooley, last minute, Leinster semi-final. Well, th that was kind of a, a lucky one, you know. Um, when there's a man coming across with a ball like that, you obviously hope he's going to hit it across you. Because if he hits it to the top corner or the bottom corner, you really have no chance. Uh, I was just on the lucky side that day, it just came across me and I rose the hurl and, and uh, was lucky enough I blocked it out, you know. In the final minute of the first half in the other semi-final, Jerry Ennis scored Dublin's second goal to give them a surprising five-point lead over Kilkenny, going in for the break. However, Kilkenny recovered and scored two goals on their way to a seven-point victory. Phelan runs on inside to Delaney, a snapshot, and it's going to net! PJ Delaney looks bemused! He was going for a point, but they know where it finished. It finished in the Dublin net. Philly Larkin. Dropped in towards DJ Carey, rises up for it, and he's got a goal! DJ has turned this match around with the help of PJ Delaney. I make it a goal at seven points for the man from Young Ireland in Gorham. Do you believe in Santa Claus? It's a, a funny question. I do. I have. A, I have. I still have something from Santa Claus when I was four. That's the helmet. That's the helmet. All right. And uh, now, as, as you can let's see. clear this up. This is the helmet you will use this year, and that you've used in all your senior hurling career. That's right. Uh, I've used this for a long time now. I got this when I was four years of age. I'm now 26, so I have it 22 years. It's a little bit battered. Uh, there's, a, there's tape holding it together, it's cracked, it's, uh, you know, there's a bit of blood on it, there's a bit of <laughs> bandage on it for the blood, there's, there's everything on it, but it's the one thing that I would ever hate to lose or, or uh, ever break or ever not have when I'm going to a game. There was a fantastic atmosphere in Croke Park for the final. Wexford and Kilkenny are old rivals, but for Wexford in particular, to beat Kilkenny in a Leinster final is something special. 20 minutes into the half, DJ Carey converted this free to give Kilkenny a 6 points to 2 lead. But Wexford came back well. Nicely at Liam Cohen, let it go off his stick. Tom Dempsey here has it almost falling down. Goal scorer in the All-Ireland final has turned it over the bar. And there's just two between them. Martin Storey tripped. Injured indeed as he was flicking that ball up towards Gary Lappin. A chance for Lappin and he's put it over the bar. And there's just one point between the teams. In the closing stages of the half, Kilkenny held a one-point lead, but within the space of two minutes, they had increased that to five. John Parr trying to link up there with Andy Comerford. Back to Philly Larkin, the snapshot, and that's sailing over the bar. Kyo, hand passing it towards Liam Dunn. Larry O'Gorman an option as well. Oh, a terrible ball straight to Peter Barry. Miss hit it however, Eugene Furlong has lost it as well, Charlie Carter in after it, a series of errors here, and in front of goal, it's played, PJ Delaney! Early in the second half, Andy Comerford increased Kilkenny's lead to six points. Wexford needed to respond, and soon. Liam Dunn, right in there. Tom Dempsey coming right across, from left to right, bearing it on goal, and in play, yes! The man with the goal in touch. And the All-Ireland of Leicester Chelsea.
champions are back in business. It's 1 8 to 1 5. Here's the free. Paul called the taker. That looks a beauty. That's straight over the ball. David Byrne has it, the new man in the full back line for Kilkenny. Larry Murphy chased a good 30 metres to make a dispossession there. Gets it to Adrian Fenland. Players calling for it in the deafening noise of Cork Park. Can he hear them? Can he see them? He spotted the run here of Rory McCarthy. McCarthy, a story alongside him. Goes for the score himself. Just the point between the teams. Billy Byrne then urging the side on. The champions now playing like champions. Having had a giant lift with that goal by Tom Dempsey in the 11th minute of the second half. There was little between the teams over the next 15 minutes as they exchanged goals. Seven minutes left, Rory McCarthy scored to give Wexford a one-point lead. It was anybody's game. That was until super sub Billy Byrne took to the field. The face of Liam Dunn from Olaf the Ballot. Wexford champions twice in recent years. Down it goes in towards Billy Byrne with his first touch. Can he score? story without the stick the hand pass to Gary Lapham the champions now turning it on the second half against very game challengers into his burn again he's cut it once more edge of the square and that one is going to the the last year that uh, Wexford beat Kilkenny in the Leinster final. Here comes Billy Byrne again. A wonderful super sub. And he gently taps it over the ball. The goal two points for Billy Byrne. He's only been on the field about 10 minutes and already he's a candidate for man of the match. There's only one Billy Byrne. 2.14 to 1. Wexford, so long in the wilderness, had retained the Leinster crown. Could Kenny, as losing finalist though, would get a second chance in the new revamped quarterfinals of the All Ireland. Three teams contested the Ulster Senior Hurling Championship. Down over came Derry in the semi-final to set up yet another final meeting with old rivals Antrim. In that final at Casement Park, Antrim were surprisingly outplayed by Down, who scored three goals on their way to a shock victory. Martin Bailey in there for Down. The ball just might, might break in the quick heart. Picked up here by Sean McElhatton. And flicked into the left by No Sands coming across the line of attack. Number 15, No Sands, the scorer. Knocked in again by McGrath. Flicked forward by Savage. And here's a real chance now for the right corner forward man. And he gives it a corner. And he pushed the net. The run here by made by Calder out to Jerry McGrath. Yes, it's a great goal by McGrath. It is a super move by Dan. With the provincial finals over, the draw was made for the new hurling quarterfinals. Tipperary, who lost the Munster final to Clare, would play Down. The winners to play Wexford in the All Ireland semi final. And Kilkenny, beaten in the Leinster final, would play Galway in the other quarter final the winners of that to play Clare. Both quarterfinals were played over the same weekend, the first on a Saturday in Clonus County Monon. It is unique, a hurling game in the All-Ireland Championship at Clonus on a Saturday afternoon. Down managed to stay with Tipperary for the first 12 minutes. This is a particularly good score from Michael Braniff. Good work on it by Noel Sands to Michael Braniff. That's a great score. 
but Tipperary began to pick up the pace and this was a very good goal, the first one, coming from Eugene O'Neill. Leeson, Tipperary, Carl gets up for it. Nice layoff by Carl to O'Neill, goal chance, yes! Yes, Eugene O'Neill. Tipperary now four points ahead. When John Lahey scored his first point of the game, Tip's lead had increased to eight points. Lahey put on a great display of point scoring in this game. And in the last minute of the first half, his point from the sideline cut increased Tipperary's lead to 12. Tipperary, one goal, 13 points, down four points. Noel Sands was playing well for Down despite his team being so far behind and he scored an excellent long-range point early in the second half. But Tipperary continued to dominate and with their lead increased to 16 points, Aidan Ryan hit the goal trail. Aidan Ryan taking it down, Aidan Ryan bearing down on the down goal! Great score by Aidan Ryan! With 15 minutes still left to play, John Lahey scored his sixth point to increase the gap to 20 points. Down looked to be on a hiding to nothing. But in the next 10 minutes, Down had managed to reduce Tipperary's lead considerably by scoring no less than three goals, the third of those coming from Noel Sands. Savage on the carry. Out to Coulter Barry, one of the goal scorers. Into Noel Sands. Oh, what a goal! What a goal. Sands, the scorer. <laughs> Wonderful goal. Dan's third in the game. And that is as good as you'll see from anybody, anywhere. Dan's fight back was good to see, but there was no doubt as to the winners of this encounter. Aidan Flanagan got a third goal for Tipperary. John Lahey scored his eighth point of the match just before full time. Tipperary, three goals, 24 points. To Dan's three goals and eight. Tipperary were then in the All-Ireland semi-final. Semple Stadium Thurles was the venue for the second quarter-final between Kilkenny and Galway. Almost 23,000 people in attendance to witness one of the most exciting games of the year. The first half belonged to Galway. With 17 minutes played, they had an eight-point lead with the help of two goals. Towards Jokuni! Yeah! Pat Costello's puck out. Again, giving the forward players every possible chance. Liam Burke coming into it. He's got support over if he needs it. Goes for the shot himself. Stayed by Roman. And in the end, it's swept in. Kilkenny's spirits were lifted by an excellent DJ Carey goal. Philly Larkin getting it into Michael Phelan. DJ Carey! of expectation when he gets it. Carries it on, he scores! I think he felt he might have been hooked. DJ's 16th goal in championship hurling. But Galway pulled away again, and they soon hit the net again. Kevin Broderick, the scorer. Towards Joe McGrath, holding it up for Kevin Broderick to come onto it. He's now been marked by Dan O'Neill, remember. That's into Joe Cooney. Lovely ball across to Justin Campbell. This is a great move by Galway. How will it finish? Top by Adrian Rowland. Back to safety once again. Kevin Broderick buries it. A third goal for Galway. That deserves something. And in the end, it got it. In the 29th minute, three goals in 20 minutes for Galway. This was the third. Great save by Adrian Ronan. He was a little unlucky. Went off his leg the second time. By half time, Galway led by nine points. Galway three goals and nine, that's 18. Kilkenny won six, that's nine. Double scores. In the first 12 minutes of the second half, Kilkenny staged a great comeback. Free to Kilkenny. DJ to take it. Long distance out. Will it curl insufficiently? It does. And it's a very good start for the second half for the Cats.
Carl Moore was going into that when it comes there towards Charlie Carter. Lovely score by Charlie. First of the match. Dan O'Neill with the sideline cut to Pat O'Neill. Chased by Joe McGrath. On to John Carr. Nicely infield. DJ's after it. Fast getting it away from uh, Nigel Shocknessy. Shocknessy trying to close him down still. DJ getting away from his man and he puts it over the ball. This is a brilliant spell for Kilkenny. DJ Carey has got a goal and five points. Willie O'Connor out by Eddie as well. Next it's Dan O'Neill to the unmarked Andy Comerford. Huge one downfield. DJ's in there waiting. A goal! DJ Carey, brilliant. This is a superb match. DJ's got 2-5. Time to jump for joy again. All of a sudden, just two points between them. What a goal by DJ. What a player. Again, it's picked up here. Charlie Carter. Still soloing forward. Nicely in for Phelan. They've got another! Kilkenny are in front. What a game this sport is. Michael Phelan. 13 minutes into the second half. Would you possibly believe it? When DJ Kerry converted this free, Kilkenny had turned a nine-point deficit into a two-point lead. And Galway had only scored one point so far in the second half. However, they got the next three to take a one-point lead. Pat O'Neill, Kevin Broderick next. This is Liam Burke, the hand pass outside to the man in support. Francis Ford with the shot, and Francis Ford with the point. Listen to the cheer. His third point of the match. DJ Carey was a master at his work. With two goals and six points to his credit already, he had some input into Kilkenny's fourth goal. Pat O'Neill to take this, that's the position. Every attack so vital at this stage. DJ Carey following in this himself. Oh, first shot for O'Shea! A goal for Kilkenny! Ken O'Shea! 27 minutes of the second half gone. What an introduction to the championship! DJ Carey scored two more points before the end to bring his personal tally to two goals and eight. Kilkenny have booked their semi-final place with a two-point victory. The final score in a great game, Kilkenny 4-15, Galway 3-16, that's 27 points to 25. Most of us would have gone along, I'd say, to the Galway-Kilkenny game in Thurles, you know, and it was absolutely frightening. I mean, Galway played so well in the first half and you'd say, you were gearing yourself up for marking the Galway wing forward, you know, you were thinking that way. And then DJ just took the game by the scruff of the neck. And along with the likes of Charlie Carter and PJ Delaney. And uh, they played superb stuff in the second half and uh, had a great win. And leaving Torres that day, you'd be kind of, you were half worried definitely anyway. You were saying that if they can reproduce that form, it would, they'd be hard to stop. Our biggest worry going to Crow Park that day was it had been five weeks since we played our last championship game and Kilkenny had three championship games in the meantime. We had decided going to Crow Park that we were going to make it much tighter than that and we would mark the Kilkenny forwards a way, way tighter than, than Galway did. And again in Crow Park that day, our start was the crucial thing. We started off at 90 miles an hour again. So the first chance of the match, just, just outside the 45 metre line, he mishit it. Brian Lowe comfortably under it. It's PJ Delaney, by the way, at full forward this afternoon. Ken O'Shea is to the right, Charlie Carter to the left. Connor Clancy is on the 40 for uh, Clare. That's Gerald Lachlan playing it full forward, and he knocks it over the bar for the most difficult angle. Back into midfield. Pat O'Neill remaining at centre half back. And here comes James O'Connor. Great bit of dash. Wonderful movement and another very good point. James O'Connor, two attacks for Clare. 
Two points for the Bannermen. So struck out here for the recently married David Fitzgerald. Into Conor Clancy, hoping to make an impression at centre half forward. Good movement here, O'Connell. Let's be across here. Chance for Higgerty. Oh, it's stopped. It comes back out to the sparrow, and it's finished. What a great start for Clare. A goal and a point to the credit of Gerald Ocklin. Only four minutes gone. PJ O'Connell was breezing in here. Lovely use of the hand pass. On to Fergal Hagerty, the shot stopped on the line by Adrian Ronan, but in the follow-up, the Sparrow got there first. Meanwhile, the Clare captain, Anthony Daly, straight at Philly Larkin, moves away from the would-be challenge. Good ball in, high and over the bar. That's exactly what the casts have required. And it's taken their midfielder, Philly Larkin, to produce that score. They brought Adrian Ronan out from goal to take this. Sun into his eyes, but wind assisted. It's a huge one. Right into the square. DJ in there after it. And going down, and the referee says penalty. Fouled, I think, by Brian Lowen. He stumbled, down he went, and Dickie Murphy had no doubt. DJ Carey to hit this one. I was behind the goals, and the DJ took the penalty, and... There, are, there have been great saves, but I mean, that must rank among the really great saves that David Fitz made that year. How he saw the ball coming, I don't know, because I didn't see it coming. Big Kenny trailing by four points, here comes DJ, great save by David Fitzgerald! A wonderful penalty save! I, I, I can guarantee you, he met it with a lot of power anyhow in the day, but I think looking back on it, and looking at the video, and looking the way I was before he hit it, and I, the way I felt myself, I felt, I remember saying to the boys, lads, we're going to stop this one. I was focused on what I had to do. It didn't matter, like, there were 60,000 people there, and they were worn. It didn't matter. I was just focused on that ball, and that was it. Did you know that Gerald O'Clan was standing uh, in goal as a second goalkeeper that day? Oh, I, I could hear him all right, yeah. I was afraid if I let it in, what he'd say, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Sideline cut by Baker. Under it there was Philly Larkin. Drops down, however. Still a few problems for the Kilkenny backs to cope with. Trying to get that one out. Coming out here towards Fargal Hagerty. Trying to make a better angle for himself. Dropping in. Adrian running under it well. Good stop with the sun in his eyes. Great clearance. Frank Lowen touching it down there. But PJ Delaney anticipating. The hand pass was meant for... John Parr went to Ollie Baker instead. Again, they sent diagonal balls across here. Picked up here with Niall Gilligan, hoping to knock it over the bar. That's a fine score. First of the afternoon for Niall Gilligan. DJ Carey, one from four so far, where frees are concerned. And that's two from five. His second point, both of them from freeze, trying to keep this rally going now. Jamesy O'Connor flicking that one on. I haven't seen an awful lot of Jamesy in this first half. Colin Lynch in there to challenge Andy Comerford. Still Lynch, still Comerford giving chase. Good layoff at the end of all of that. Here's James E. Great score. James e. O'Connor does it, his fifth point. Well, when he gets those breaks in front of goal, he's usually able to take it in most decisively. Good penetrating run that time by Colin Lynch. Great layoff. There was a man loose and a well taken score. James E. O'Connor to take this. It's next to the shadow of the Hogan stand. James E. dropping it off the post. Niall Gilligan responding quickly. Picking it up there ahead of Willie O'Connor. Taking his chance. A 
second point for Niall Gilligan. If Clare gets to the final, he'll be trying to impress upon the selectors that she, he should be in from the outset. Certainly the corner forwards are doing well, getting out there ahead, in particular Gilligan against Willie O'Connor. This time David Fitzgerald being called on from his goal to come out and make the pick-up. Little block down on it, Charlie Carter's across there for Gilkenny. Batted out here, Sean McMahon, and uh, going down injured is Canis Brennan. Seems to be a facial injury. Play continues up in the middle of the field, Connor Clancy. Strongly built fellow outside towards James e. O'Connor on his left hand side, very much his trademark in the past. It is again James e. performing his party piece in Croke Park, notching up his sixth point of the day. Adrian Ronan with the puck out, varying it out to the right hand side this time towards Andy Comerford. Back by Baker P.G. O'Connell half blocked there by Dan O'Neill the hand pass inside was intended for Pat O'Neill but instead it's P.G. O'Connell on the left hand side usually a good place for him to come to strike the score O'Connell's first point and in this particular match it's Clare who've made the best start to the second top still Kilkenny trying to somehow pressurise this Wonderful clear back line. Again, Peter Barry trying to set up the chance. DJ Carey has it. That spells danger. Trying to go by the fullback once again. Back into Charlie Carter's corner. The belting shot has gone over the bar. A wonderful score by Charlie Carter. His second point of this match. The way O'Connor has dropped that one down. James e. O'Connor in after it. Sprinting away from Liam Cohen. The point came from the handling error. It doesn't matter for Jamesy, he's got his seventh point. But Eddie O'Connor and the Kilkenny fans will feel that he should have caught that one and cleared. He didn't. Nicky Brennan, the team manager, has had to make the switches and the changes. He's added a couple of subs to the list we have on the programme this afternoon. Aidan Noller and John Dooley have been added. Davy Fitzgerald's puck out, a huge one. With the wind behind him. Dan O'Neill trying to keep that one away for PG O'Connell. The sparrow was in. Still O'Neill trying to get that ball away. First touch hitting him down. O'Connell has it and he rushes it over the bar. That's two points in the second half now for PJ O'Connell from O'Callaghan's Mills. And all of the Clare following here are really enjoying this afternoon's play. DJ will take the free, he's got just two points in this match so far, both from frees. And the fact that he's been held so well by the Clare backs has meant that Kilkenny have not been able to function as they might. That's his third point. But they need DJ to be involved a great deal more, getting chances, making chances and taking a lot more scores. 116 to 9 points, there's still time. Davy Fitzgerald to puck this one out. Sun in his eyes, wind at his back. Towards Connor Clancy. Billy Larkin. Broken play in midfield. Comes to the impish Jamesy again. Thought about the shot that time. Little block on it by Dan O'Neill. O'Neill trying to kick it away from Jamesy again. Doing very well the wing back. One handed down just as far as Peter Barry. Aware that he was going to be hooked or blocked. That's where the sparrow is back there helping out. There's a great togetherness about this uh, Clare team. Wonderful cohesion from goalkeeper up the corner forward. And a great spirit and determination in their ranks as well. That's PJ Delaney goes down to DJ Carey. Getting away from Daly. Still DJ. That's what they need it. And Kilkenny are back in this. And it's taken the brilliant DJ Carey to get it for them. In the 20th minute of the second half, reminiscent of the goal he got in the first against Galway.
that was a tremendous goal. I mean, yeah, and he would have hooked any other player, I'd say, in the country for, for that goal. But he dipped his shoulder, feigned that he was going to hit it, went that extra step, got that little bit of space and stuck it in the net. You know, brilliant, brilliant finishing. Uh, I mean, he's such a quality player that you give him half a chance or any percentage of a chance that he'll stick it in the net. But we got over it. That was the main thing we were in the other end. James O'Connor will take the free. This to keep Clare very much in command of this game. What a performance from play, from freeze. Jamesy has got nine points. Clare were seven points ahead at that stage. Jim Kenny got that down to four before full time, but Clare had reached their second All-Ireland final in three years. Jim Kenny became the first team ever to be beaten twice in the same championship. Final score. Clare, one goal, 17, that's 20 points. Kilkenny, one goal, 13, that's 16. The noise and the colour of the Wexford support at the second semi-final was tremendous. But within five minutes of the start, Tipperary's John Lahey had given them a lot to think about. And O'Mara playing that one in towards Eugene O'Neill. Lovely hand pass outside here towards John Lahey. First chance, first point. Ten seconds gone, what a start. He's looking really sharp. Brendan Cummins pucking this one out. Doing as well as Fitzhenry with the length and the distance. Towards Declan Ryan, picked up here neatly by Brian O'Mara. Back towards Declan Ryan again. Knew he was going to be hooked. Two men after him. Back to Conor Gleeson, the Garda based here in Dublin. And just at the edge of the square, it's gone in! John Lahid has done it again! Wexford have been playing catch-up with Paul Codd, scoring an excellent point, but Tipperary soon hit the net again. Back in by McGrath again, into Brian O'Mara, trying to get free, the hand pass forward for Lahid, here he comes! Great save, back down towards Eugene, back down towards Amara. A stop again on the run, it's gone in! Brian Amara! Tipperary ahead by six points after the goal, and then it was seven after Tommy Dunn's point. Tip mopping up everything in defence, setting up the chances, and that's gone over the bar! Wexford are not in the game at this stage. Nor were inspirational players like Martin Storey, Liam Dunn or Tom Dempsey. Paul Codd was Wexford's best scorer in the first half with four points. This is his fourth, scored from the sideline just on half time to leave the scores. Two goals and seven points, two seven points. Early in the second half, Martin Storey scored two good points as he tried to lift his team. down towards Storey, dropped by Shelley, won by Martin Storey, he's got uh, Tom Dempsey inside, if he needs him, he doesn't, he puts it over the bar. Every time Wexford scored, Tiverary replied immediately. Larry Murphy, look at how back he is, he's hooked, ball one back by Cleary, clever hand pass to Conor Gleeson, 45 metres out, that is a fantastic score. The Tiverary defence was playing very well, particularly Paul Shelley, who was to be declared the man of the match. Still looking for their first goal in this match, if there is to be one. Will he get it? Liam Dunn takes it. In it goes, and Shelley has read the intentions and seen the script before. Got out there ahead before it got even near to Billy Byrne. With seven minutes left to play, there were just four points between the teams, but Wexford could not get any closer than that, and Tipperary pulled away in the closing stages. That's been taken, Shelley with a marvellous catch again, what a performance by the number two. Brian O'Mara was left unmarked and he puts it over and Tip are on their way to another All-Ireland final. Final score, Tipperary 2 goals, 16 points, Wexford 15 points. And so the first year of a new experimental format had produced an eagerly awaited final clash between old rivals, Clare and Tipperary. In the run-up to the final, Ger Nan explained how his team's winter training helped in part to the success during the year. Now, this is a very, very difficult hill. It's 185 metres of torture during the months of January, February and March, where you start down there at the road and run, 
sprint, not just run. Sprint all the way to the top. And no sooner have you got to the top, then you have to turn back, go back down again, and sprint up again. Usually 24 to 30 times per session. And we have people getting sick and almost fainting and giving up and going back again. And this goes on for about three months of winter time. It is a tough, tough training schedule. But I think one, one that pays off well when the summer months come around. Well, I've done it once. Well, I walked up the hill once, actually, and I found it very difficult. <laughs> so that was about enough for me. It, it, it is a very deceptive hill looking from, da from down here. If you go down to the bottom and look up, it's only then you realize how difficult the hill is. Painting your car in the county colors certainly gets you noticed. In Six Mile Bridge County, Clare, we met the pit crew. If they don't see this car on its way to the All Ireland final, I assure you of one thing, they'll definitely hear it. Just give us a, a turn the ignition key there oh, and play me right. Oh. In the Tipperary camp on press night, the mood was relaxed. And jovial. You've been asked hundreds of questions by press men, radio men, television men. What's the question you haven't been asked that you wish somebody would ask you? I haven't a clue, Jimmy. You better ask me. Oh, that's a fair enough question. Then, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're from Clonalty, are you? Yes. What's your name? Kieran Hammersley. Hammersley? Yes. Now tell me this, Kieran, who's the best hurler on the Tipperary team? Declan Ryan. Oh. <laughs> Did he tell you to say that? No. That's your God honest belief? Yes. Good night, Kieran. Him. How about that? Come in. <laughs> There's no point in showing a shot of it even, Bob, because it can't tell you, shots of, can't tell you how heavy it is. But is that the same stick you showed me earlier? It is, Jimmy, yeah. It's getting lighter. Maybe I'm getting stronger. <laughs> that's it, that's it. <laughs> But there's no flexibility in it at all? None whatsoever, Jimmy, no. Are you the only man with one like that? I think so. I don't think anyone else would use it. So if, you, if I gave you that ball now, you'd drive it out of sight? I probably would, yeah, but I don't want it, just in case I don't want And if I stood here in front of you, you'd drive me out of sight as well? <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> What were the feelings coming up to the final? There were two feelings. Among the supporters, there was a real feeling of terror. That Tip would beat us in the All Ireland and that we'd undo all the good that was done in the Monster final. Now, before the Monster final, we had drilled into the players. Not alone would we beat Tip in the Monster final, but if we met him again in the All Ireland, we'd beat him the second time. And before Tip played Wexford, we had been, in our training, we had been constantly drilling into them the hope that Tip would win that we'd get a second chance to beat him a second time in the one year. Now, we felt sure that Tip would beat Wexford because it was a very difficult year for Wexford. They had done tremendously well to win the Leinster Championship, but they, it's very difficult to put two t uh, titles back to back. And um, we, we felt all along that Tip were going to win, that they would be in the final. So we had started our mental preparation, if you like, for it, a long way in advance of the All Ireland. So when Tip got there, we said, great, it's now Tip in the All Ireland. Here's the chance of a lifetime to do something to Tip that Tip had never done to Clare. In other words, beat him twice in the one year in the championship. Then no one would ever, ever question the quality of this Clare team if we did that. It was frightening coming up to it, you know, and the media build up and there was a bit of controversy and uh, it had everything in the build up really. And um, you were just worried that, you know, would it all come back to haunt us then, you know, that we, we had done all the hard work, won the Munster final and now we're they going to come back and snatch it off us. But I think maybe the fear of losing uh, drove us on that bit extra and uh, we were prepared for a huge challenge and that's exactly what we got. Heading to Crow Park that day, I think I've never felt so calm myself, or all of us never felt so calm. The dressing room beforehand, the build up beforehand, it was, uh, it was, like, it was it's like going to a challenge match really. Free to clear between the 45 and 65 meter lines. And Sean McMahon has already scored 11 points in the championship of 19 and 97. Make that 12 points. Great start for Clare. Two minutes gone and their centre back, McMahon, gives them that little cushion of a point, but it's the moral value of the score. Cummins, Brendan Cummins, long puck. 
the first stick is broken in this final. Tipperary trying to get through it. Take back to Michael Cleary. They're level in the All Ireland final of 1997. And Michael Cleary has been there, done that before, is the man who scored it, and six minutes are gone. Thirteen All Ireland medal winners in the Clare team, seven in the Tipperary team. Here's one of them, Johnny Lai, got a hefty knock. The players around it know it. Now he's up very quickly though. He broke his jaw in the game against Wexford in the semi-final. He's wearing a mask today. That's the number 12. Let's watch here what happens. And number 8 is Tommy Dunn. Tommy's had a terrific season for Tipperary. He lands this one. It'll be 22 points for him in this championship season. And Tipperary have taken the lead. And then Shea Clare, the midfield find. Up to the stick of Clancy. And it's picked up by Paul Shelley. Getting the better of Fergus Tui. Here's Sean McMahon. Sean McMahon playing on Declan Ryan today. That's a battle that could decide a lot of things. O'Mara here from Mullen Home. It's O'Halloran chase O'Mara right through. Short the stick. Denied them the possible hook, and it's a great score from O'Mara. Tried at corner forward in the game at Clonus against Don. Showed that day that he had what takes, and Tipperary have found a new star. Every ball you get, every puck you get has to be hard earned. Holly Baker on the move. Looks up for his score. He's not a man who's noted as a scorer, but that's a good one. And that is really a booster for Clare, who needed a score. That's after 11 and a half minutes. They've got nine and a half minutes without a score. McMahon got a stick to it, but Declan Ryan avails of the opportunity to go for a score and take it. No, they're signaling and wide. I was absolutely certain from my position that that was over the bar. I think he Murphy's going to go in and sort it out. Mike Cleary's gone behind of the other umpire. And there's something going on between Johnny Lahey and Liam Doyle. It's been signaled as a wide. Well, we've been playing quarter of an hour and Lahey hasn't got a score and James O'Connor hasn't got a score. Uh, got long odds on that in the bookies this morning. Holly Baker for Clare. Out on the corner is Fergie Tui. Here is Tipperary player Paul Shelley. Tui dropping it in around. Batted down by Michael Ryan. Helped out by Conal Bonner. And Noel Sheehy comes out from fullback and clears off his left side. A good clearance. In the midfield, Declan Ryan picks and leaves it out. Declan Ryan took a knock as he dispatched the ball to Johnny Lahey. Oh, this time there's no argument about it. It's over the bar. It's Lahey, brilliantly fled by Ryan. Declan Ryan is a very substantial centre half forward. Yeah, that was a great, great catch and was led on to Lahey. And Lahey's first opportunity, he lifts and he strikes. That was a great point. Great point. Colin Lynch Clare. Good block, Connor Gleason. That was Michael Cleary. Declan Ryan. The layoff to Gleason. And that's Tipperary at their methodical best. A point by their captain, Conor Gleason. Conor Bonner's clearance. Out comes Michael Cleary. With him there was Frank Lowen. Lynch, Lynch getting away from Gleeson, drops it in and over the bar of Brendan Cummins. Colin Lynch, the scorer, clears third point of the game, a game that is now 17 minutes old.
poke down a little bit by Daly. Three clearmen, Michael Cleary, Declan Ryan again, feeding it down into the corner where Eugene O'Neill is stationed. He runs up against Lowen, and that usually means full stop. This is Thomas Dunn for Tip. Nice, neat pop over the ball. Lovely score by Dunn with the neatness of the artist. Marvellous stuff. And again, who was at the centre of the move? Declan Ryan. 24 minutes gone. And the time has absolutely flown. Michael Ryan here from Upper Church, Stromban. Down for the hand of Declan Ryan. Declan Ryan to Johnny Lai. Johnny Lai. Over the bar, Declan Ryan has done it again. In my opinion, he is outstanding for Tipperary. I don't know if Sean McGuinness concurs. That was a great catch by Ryan. Look where Lahi is. Lahi sweeping across the back, lifts the ball and strikes it over the bar. That was brilliant play. Colin Lynch crossing that left corner. James O'Connor got a stick to it, brought it down. A tipper resolute in there and Tommy Dunn puts it away down to Eugene O'Neill, the 19-year-old. And O'Neill fresh to the ball before Brian Lowen. He love that one. Not many people have scored against Lowen. In fact, I think that's only the third point scored of Brian Lowen in this championship. This is Tommy Dunn right from the 45 meter line and Tommy puts it over and Tipperary stretch their lead first goal of the game for James O'Connor is it? yes it is but only when it came off the goalkeeper and there's no doubt Clare had been struggling to a certain result in this game. That came off Lahey, down to his club mate O'Mara. Declan Ryan beaten by McMahon. Colin Lynch Clare, midfielder, playing right hand back just for the moment. Up as far as PJ O'Connor, lets it out to Hegarty. Hegarty in with Gilligan is there, Gilligan with Shelley behind Shelley is she. Gilligan has it again, can he get room to swing a stick here? He can, he does, and it's over the bar. But that's back-to-back -back points for Clare, and are they back in business? Half an hour gone. Big catch by Ollie Baker from the trip of John Lahey. This is now Gilligan. Looking for another score, and he's got it. Oh, he loved it. Gilligan is beginning to do what no corner forward has done this season. Get the better of Paul Shelley. That's three in a row now, Jim. And he and Gilligan have been swinging at each other. So it was obviously, I was just reading it, I said what the word said. Gilligan has it, turns, lifts the ball and strikes a great point. Tremendous point. That's three in a row now for Clare. That's really pulled them back into the game. Game six. Referee has just had a word with each of them there. Gilligan's causing problems in there, Jimmy. He's taking plenty of ball. Johnny Lahey. Liam Doyle got back in him. Oh, that's great stuff. I mean, that is class. Lahey with virtually no room to even pick it and look. Still gets a score. You have to be tough, but you have to be skillful too. The whistles go at half time. There hasn't been in the goal in the game, but there have been 16 very good points, and Tipperary have got most of those. At half time, Tipperary, 10 points. Clare, 6 points. Having probably played pretty poorly in the first half, um, Niall Gilligan got two very, very vital points just coming up to half time. And um, I think we felt at half time that four points down, the wind was a factor. There was, there was no question about that. Having played very poorly, we were very much in the game. Everyone felt in the dressing room there was so much to play for. And I think um, 
I think that was probably the most decisive time in the game was actually the half-time whistle known that we had a good win behind us, we hadn't played to our potential, we needed to up it in the second half and I think everyone faced into the second half with that sort of view and that we had a lot of hard work to do but we were well capable of doing it. The one good thing about this Clare team is you don't really need to say a hell of a lot in the dressing room, you know, we would feel that the work has been done and let's go and do it now, you know, and I think any team that has a real sense of that you've worked hard together, you've put in the mileage together, you've put in the suffering, that then you don't really, the challenge speaks for itself and you go ahead and, and try and meet the challenge. Second half, I think Liam Doyle's point again after half time was, was the start we needed and it kind of kick-started us and, and I think the momentum very much swung to us with, with that score. This is Liam Doyle for Clare. Over the bar, a great point by the wing half back after 14 seconds. Liam Doyle. Colin Lynch, 25 year old, to take the, fo the footballer to a strong man and a great point for Clare who wasn't around for their championship run of 1995. Into the hand of Connor Clancy. They're going for early scores and they're getting them. Brilliant start to the second half for the 1995 All Ireland Champions Clare. This is Connor Gleason, the captain from Borland. Dropping it in, looking for O'Mara, got the touch down by McCleary. Made space for himself, he was so quick, but after the ball comes Brian Lohan. What an inspiring figure he is. Michael Ryan tried to bat it down for Tipperary. Terrific match. An old shaky, but it's over the line. Brendan Cummins, another tremendous length in it. Aidan Brown goes down, tries to pick it up. Anthony Daly prevents him doing so. The brave man will pick that up into his hand. Clear down to get there on the attack, it's Gerald Lachlan. Fergal Hegarty, Liam Sheedy stayed with it. It's back to O'Loughlin. Colin Bonner with him. Oh, a magnificent point by the longest serving current player in the Clare team, the forward they call Sparrow. What a score by the Sparrow, look, he wins the ball, he goes out, he runs out, makes space for himself from the byline, cuts it right across, oh magnificent score, only one in it now. One point separating these two great monster counties. Johnny Lahey tries to pick it up. Look at the number of Clare defenders that are around to make sure that Lahey gets nowhere fast. First he has one mark of McMahon, then Baker's there to help, Lynch is there to help. Being honest, I, I reckon we've the best defence that's there with the two loans, Michael Holleran in front here on the half back line. We're a group, we spend a lot of time talking over things. We we have our chat before games, we, we talk over different scenarios and like everyone has a, a bit to contribute. They are all very sensible, they know, they know their own games. As you say about myself and the goalkeeper, I think a lot about it. So do the lads. They think a lot about their games and how they're going to play. And that's the one good thing I can say, that we do talk and we get on so well together, you know. Brendan Cummins, Valley Bacon Grinch, same club as the great Babs Keating of another playing era. What a player this man is in possession now. Colin Lynch, Clare. He'll be vying for man of the match today. TJ O'Connell here for Clare. Colin Bonner can't get onto it. He needs assistance. He's got it with his brother Connell and then no G. In the hand of Baker. Baker to his midfield partner Lynch. There's a score on here. Lynch, who has played a quite magnificent game gets his second point of the game but he's been wonderful at midfield for 
That was a bad clear shot from Chile, caught by Ollie Baker. Look at the space Lynch made himself, lifted his head, and bang, and now we're level. That's Len Gaynor, but that's, we're just showing you one side of the story. Jerry has been there as well, He's sitting down at the moment. John McMahon got caught there by Aidan Ryan. Aidan Ryan knocks it inside, looking for young O'Neill. He's got by Lowen. Eugene O'Neill, great pass, and pass by three forwards. But now they have the chance with Tommy Dunn, it's over the bar. And Tommy Dunn is another contender for man of the match, his fifth point of the game. That was great pressure on O'Neill, the ball came out, Tommy Dunn just happened to be starting, lifted the ball and struck a great point, but that was great work by O'Neill. This is Colin Lynch for Clare, out to James O'Connor. Score for James e. His second of the second half. There's no doubting his talent, and even, even his foes would like to see him do well on the big occasion. There's uh, Mert Duggan, Michael Doyle and Len Gaynor, the three selectors of Tipperary. Jimsy O'Connor takes the three, and Jimsy knocks it over the bar, and Clare are in front for the first time since Sean McMahon scored in the second minute of the game. Hayden Ryan, Tipperary, up to Michael Cleary, grasped it beautifully. Inside to O'Mara, O'Mara with O'Halloran, Liam Doyle from Bodyke. O'Mara doesn't get all the praise that some of these other players get, but he's a great wing back. Shelley and Gilligan. Shelley got a tip of the stick to it. Across comes Colin Bonner. Down goes Gilligan, but he's up again. Between Bonner and O'Connor, Bonner's got the better of that today. Tommy Dunn tip, lovely ball into the inside line. Between O'Neill and Lowen. Lowen out with his left hand. Sean McMahon player. Down to Connor Clancy. Beats one bonner to it, but Connor is there. Now it's James O'Connor. Tackled, held up, and fouled by Liam Shady. Free to Clare. No doubt to be taken by James O'Connor. Look at O'Connor go. He takes the ball. He knows he's going to be fouled. O'Connor's. Who has the guts and determination, wants to go and get a score. Jim J. O'Connor has got the last three scores of this match. And he is now coming into his own. Indeed, so are Claire. This is Michael Ryan. Over the head of Anthony Daly. There to clear it before Connor Leeson can get in a challenge. Then behind she, the Connell Bonner, for clearance. Holly Baker is taking about a score. Then he has another thing out to four. Ryan goes crunching after him. Good fair shoulder by Michael Ryan. Well done, the upper church man. To know Sheehy looking for his third All Ireland medal today. But Clara getting in the blocks. Over she goes, David Ford. What an act of substitution that was. Tommy Dunn here for tip. Three points in the first half. Oh, and it's stopped in there by Colin Lynch. He's been magical today for Clare. I could very well have snuck in. This is done again, Tip. Cleary. What a great finish to the semi-final against Wexford. James O'Connor. Ford, this boy has made some difference. Hasn't he just? What a soap. He used to say 
a big Tim and Cliche really super sub. But this is approaching it. What a score! What a score! Look at this here for control! He knew what he wanted, he was going right through, lost his ball, flicked it up and flicked it over the bar. Now Lahey left the stick very late to James O'Connor and, and Dickie Murphy had a word with him. Four points behind at half time, Clare are now four in front. Fitzgerald. Johnny Lahey looking a little deject dejected at the moment. Number three here, no she. Good blocking of there. The Gerald Locker. It's an in around the goal between Shelley and Gilligan. Gilligan tried to turn the corner back. He succeeded. Can he get in? Oh, that is wonderful point by now Gilligan. Wonderful point. And he really has taken this temporary defence onto himself and said, stop me if you can. minutes left in the game and five points between them and will he go for the big one no he doesn't no heroics over the ball Sherlock Nan is he going to have it two All-Irelands in three years Johnny Lahey dropping it in round for Liam Cal has it it's in the back of the net it's a goal for Tipperary but was he in the square was he in the square the goal is still in doubt yeah if you watch this ball coming in ball's dropping where was he when he caught it he's in the square already but the referees give a goal. It's a goal. One point. One single point. Now have we a game or have we not got a game? Six minutes left. Maybe a bit more for time added on by referee Dickie Murphy. Our man of the match will be selected by Jim Nelson today. And there are a lot of contenders. Jim O'Connor here for Clare. Jimsy e going for a score. Oh, when the pressure on when most they needed it the artist comes to his easel Jimsy O'Connor Tommy Dunn on the 65 meter line two points between the sides Tommy's going for the point it's come off the bar <laughs> Tipperary have it in the net and what a moment for them what a moment for all Eugene O'Neill dropped in the ball was struck in as she comes in she hits the crossbar comes out and O'Neill O'Neil strikes what a goal bang bang two goals and uh, the game has turned in its head just one of those things um, I suppose we maybe got the got the break in '95 when the ball came off the, the upright and Eamon Taft finished it to the net. And uh, I certainly felt personally that, you know, maybe the luck isn't going to be with us today. And particularly after the second goal, you know, it, it was a real body blow. People said to me, um, "How did you feel when the goals went in?" I never felt like we were going to be beaten. Never. I think you you'd know that by my reaction when I picked the ball out of the net. I wasn't rushed. I wasn't netting. I always felt like we were going to win. And it's not being cocky or anything like that. It's just the way I felt. And I, I, it's the way the rest of the lads, I'd say, felt as well, that we were going to win. The only thing was that Ollie Baker came down and got a, an absolutely vital point straight after. So, again, we, we never had to, had to deal with the fact that we were down in the score, but we were level. Two minutes of normal playing time to go. The sides are level. Converted the goals to the points at 19 apiece. Half a million people have watched the championship of 1997. Half a million. And countless millions more 
around the world on television. You among them. Yes, one of the stars of the game, Conal Bonner. Up to Declan Ryan. Declan Ryan getting away from Sean McMahon. Dropping it in around the goal. Comes to Eugene O'Neill. Beaten by Brian Lowen. Lowen's clearance into the hand of Liam Doyle. Michael Ryan bats it down. Colin Bonner. Liam Shady. Liam Cal. Colin Lynch. One minute and a half to go. James O'Connor player. If ever a man can lift the McCarthy Cup, it's O'Connor. It's over the ball. James e. O'Connor. The school teacher from St. Planet in Ennis. The forward who plays with contact lenses. I was standing beside the post and there was a, 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 a kind of a glow in the sky when you'd look up and I could just see James E pivoting as he hit the ball and on it came and it was like in slow motion coming towards the, 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 the uprights <clears throat> and I knew straight away he was going over the bar and it was a fantastic feeling but there was another twist to the tail of course Lahey's through! John Lahey goes for goal, save by Fitzgerald! There's hardly time to take a breath as the ball is pushed from one end of the field to another. I remember just the ball breaking out wide to the right, to the right hand side of Oregon, and there he was. And I just thought, oh, it's the end of our lives. <laughs> well, seeing that he's beside me here, I better say the right thing. So, uh, no, I thought, uh, I thought like that from being down full forward, it was very hard to see how close he was. But when I look back on it on TV, and that. Uh, I mean, it was a tremendous save, you know. There was a goalkeeper in Ireland that I'd like to have been there, it was probably Davy on the day, you know. Normally the week before a game, what I try to do is, I try to run over every scenario that might happen in the game, go over a lot of them. Obviously you wouldn't cover some of them, you know, but a lot of them I go over and the thing I think is, if you if you think a lot of things over in your mind and your head, that on the day when t situations arise, you won't have to think, they will just happen for you. They'll be in your mind and you'll just react straight away and maybe it was one of them things I just reacted and um, looking at the video afterwards I think I reacted well on my feet I moved two or three paces to right and I didn't have to think about it it just happened you know and um, I, I would put a lot of it down to mental preparation you know for definite Michael Ryan's clearance for tip one point between them Out of all of that, at the end of it all is James O'Connor. Over, I just grabbed the bags and walked into the dressing room and sat down there for about 10 minutes before the players came in and it was 10 minutes I'll never forget because it was saying that Claire Hurling is here at last and nobody can ever ever question it now we are among the great powers of Hurling and that's what we set out to do really like in the dressing room after the games in 95 there'd be huge celebration and stuff like that well this year we were sitting back taking it all in and a um, great sense of satisfaction and a good sense of well done to each other. And then even after the All-Ireland, it was just the feeling of uh, we completed the job and, and we went ahead and we finished it off, you know, uh, and that's really the difference between the two years. This year we beat all of the traditionally strong counties on the way to winning the All Ireland and nobody can ever question but that this was a really, really great All Ireland victory for the Ireland.